What is the weirdest slash most disturbing fact about our world's history that you know? Mary Toft reportedly gave birth to up to 9 rabbits at a time. Doctors were convinced that she was telling the truth until they found pieces of corn inside the stomach of one of the rabbits, proving that it hadn't developed inside Toft's womb. It turned out that she had been manually inserting the rabbits to make the delivery look as realistic as possible. Oh. That's all folks. I knew I should have taken that left turn at Albuquerque. There are books in the Harvard University library which are bound in human flesh. I have a skeleton like that. Why are some of you so damn witty? I'm jealous. Persians used to tie cats to their shields during the war with Egypt cause it was against Egyptian law to kill cats. It was a double-edged blade. On one hand, you had a tactical advantage, because the Egyptians would try not to hit the cat, due to cats, being a holy animal, but because they were using cats as shields the Egyptians probably wouldn't show them any mercy, and have more motivation to kill them. Also, can't have been easy, to get the cats, to go along with that plan. The Mayans partied hard. They would take alcohol and hallucinogenic enemas. In social studies they had us watch a special on them, and I vividly remember an artist's rendering of a Mayan doing a handstand while getting an enema. The original keg stand. Sounds more like a peg stand. Rainbow Valley of Mount Everest is named for the rainbow colors of clothing of dead people there. So I knew this fact. Then one day I watched a video of someone passing by the body's whole new level creepy. Green boots just looked like a guy napping. I believe green boots is gone now. Russia still has not recovered its population prior to WWII. Note, as there is some debate about the validity of this statement. Russian population in 1939. 170 million. Russian population in 2021. 146 million. Island neither, but from the Great Famine and expulsion in the 1850s. Most people have 16 great great grandparents. Cleopatra had two. She's lucky to have developed working lungs, let alone be competent enough to accomplish anything. That was a family tree was a wreath. And half the Roman government was like lem have a piece of that Nile jewel, thank you very much. I mean, they were literally gold diggers. Doesn't much matter how she looks, if her dowry is one of the richest places on earth. On top of that, Rome itself relied on grain subsidies, most of those coming from Egypt. A politician who controlled the grain controlled the common folk of Rome. It's hard to resist the guy who can just order a few thousand angry plebs to lynch you. During WWI on the Eastern Front, Germany and Russia were going at it in one battle when German troops deployed mustard gas against the Russian troops who were advancing. The Russian troops emerged from the gas smoke throwing up blood, blood leaking from their nose and eyes. Their skin turned yellow and pale. They looked like undead soldiers, literal zombies. The German troops were so frightened that they abandoned their positions and retreated. It was called the Attack of the Dead Men, which took place on August 6, 1915. There is nothing scarier than fighting an enemy who is not afraid to die. The Russians knew they were gonna die, so they might as well fight to their last breath. That's WW2. As far as I know that wasn't the case in WW1. That we've been on the brink of a global nuclear exchange several times. And that in one case, Cuban blockade, it was only because a single man, Vasily Arkhipov, disagreed with standing orders that a nuclear exchange was likely averted. Or the time when there was a false alert of a nuclear launch and the Russian guy in charge didn't send an alert to send nukes as a counterattack. We came close to killing a lot of people with nuclear bomb. Even funnier is when the US dropped multiple nuclear bombs by accident for the duration of the Cold War. My favorite accidental drop is the dud that is still missing in western North Carolina. Read a letter from an officer to his wife in the Swedish army during the 30 years war. We came upon the town and beat to death all the men, but not the women and children. Those were beaten to death by the Finns. Oh my god, I studied the 30 years war a lot in university and the depth of depravity still makes me wince. Food was so scarce that people slash soldiers would literally cut babies open and eat them. PPL I think sometimes underestimate the casual depravity of humanity. 
from the fall of the Roman Empire up until the mid-19th century, not a single city majority of cities in Europe did not have sewer systems. City planners didn't build sewers until it was proven in 1855 that the cause for all the cholera epidemics was drinking water contaminated by human feces. Any time I watch a movie from this time period like Gangs of New York or a documentary around 1776, I fail in not thinking to myself man, everybody in this situation smells like pure crap. Plus bo. Then I also remember their clothes had lice. Stalin ordered scientists to do experiments to create a breed of super strong monkeys to fight wars. If I remember correctly it was actually human slash monkey hybrids that they were aiming for, which somehow makes both more and less sense at the same time. That's not surprising. Annie Jacobson claims that an engineer she was talking with while she researched one of her books told her that the aliens that landed at Area 51 were actually surgically altered mentally handicapped people. The aliens were put in what were essentially drones and ejected to land where they did. This was a way of Russia with us. The engineer claimed he knew this because he helped the US do the same exact thing back to Russia. He supposedly felt extremely guilty and confessed because of it. The bodies buried beneath John Wayne Gass's house were crammed together so tightly, the bones fused together, and it took over two years to separate all the bodies. I keep trying to wrap my head around this and just can't make sense of it. Wouldn't they originally have more volume when the flesh was still on, thereby having more room for the skeletons themselves after decomposition? What would chemically cause bones to fuse? I've never heard of this before. Short answer, water. Paraguayan war killed off 95% of its male adult population and no one even knows it happened. Hey, in Paraguayan, can confirm, I'm dead. It's okay bro, hang in there. Upon visiting the island of Cebu in the Philippines, I was regaled with old tales of flying men and how the islands in the area were deeply feared by nautical patrols of old, as the inhabitants would sometimes fly great distances through the air with knives held betwixt teeth to attack passing ships. It turns out the fighting men of the island would be catapulted from palm trees across the water into the sails of boats in scenes that must have looked like a cross between Pirates of the Caribbean and Flash Gordon. Around the same time on the other side of the world the less fearsome but much entertaining pirate Captain Norcross had a public show with dancing mice and a flute made of bone he performed through his 20 years in a cage for high treason. It's good to have hobbies. 40% of all homeless people in America still goes to work every day. Most homeless people aren't what we think of as homeless that is they are not living on the street. They are living with friends or family. Many live in their cars to around the Los Angeles area. I see them settling in every night. The Great War was meant to end on the 10th of November, but they decided to make it the 11th because it would be more memorable. Hundreds of people died in that one day span. Those who make those insane decisions never have to actually fight in the wars they control. War, a massacre of people who don't know each other for the profit of people who know each other but don't massacre each other. Paul Valery, also found as. War is a place where the young kill one another without knowing or hating each other because of the decision of old people who know and hate each other without killing each other Erich Hartman. The conquests of Timmy used terror as a way of discouraging revolts after capturing a city. Building literal towers of heads, cementing people in the city walls they were defending or instructing his soldiers to return to camp with two severed heads. When the soldiers ran out of citizens to decapitate, they would turn to POWs and after that, their wives. Most people are familiar that the likes of Genghis Khan, Julius Caesar or Napoleon existed. But not as much people know about Tima. He wasn't only arguably as successful as a military commander, but also just a really scary dude. He also really liked pillaging Georgia. Like nearly every campaign he goes he just finishes it with pillaging Georgia. Wit. Other countries, Timur's war with X is over. Georgia, or Frick, Timur is on his way. Due to fresh drinking water being so scarce on the Galapagos Islands, some bird species, such as the Galapagos hawk, have adapted by drinking the blood of other animals. Roadrunners are the same way. Not so much disturbing as it is funny, at least to me. The Kettle War. Long story short, Spain, the Holy Roman Empire, and the Netherlands 
the seven republics of the Netherlands, were beefing. One boat from Spain, engaged in a fight with a Dutch naval ship. One shot was fired. The only victim of that cannonball was a pot of soup that was cooking. The Spanish ship then surrendered. No soup for you. Not the most disturbing, but weird nevertheless. Back in the 19th century a carnival was headed through the next town over, and during the stop a hippopotamus went nuts, and started killing people and livestock. Ever since then the town has taken the hippo as its mascot, because it's such a ferocious animal. That's the one animal Steve Iwin did not mess with either. Because they were so unpredictable and scary. Guess he should have had two animals on that list. That the world let King Leopold II go completely nuts in the Congo. What's even more disturbing is how few people know about him and how horrible he was. By the standards of the 19th century he was horrible to the people who did not matter in Europe. And then there were two world wars and holocaust. Very few people realize how many bad things major European powers did in their colonies. Chainsaws were invented to cut through a woman's pelvis to aid in giving birth. Think chain on a pocket watch that chews away at the bone. I don't think I will think of that. The fact that the French believed a 17 year old peasant girl that was having visions of God telling her to bring the dauphin to Reims and they actually listened to her. And then she goes on to lift a siege, beat the English slash Burgundians in multiple battles, gets the dauphin to Reims to be crowned, and dies at the stake for cross dressing. Joan of Arc was lit. Her signature weapon was the cannon. I've heard that a huge factor in her success was the fact that, because she was a commoner she didn't have any issues talking with the artillerymen, and so got a better understanding of how cannons worked, and what they could do. Spartans bathed their newborn babies in red wine instead of warm water. Probably safer than the water at the time. Plus it looks freaking metal, to pull your newborn baby out of a red pool. Adolf Hitler was saved from drowning at age 9 in a fountain by a priest. He was also spared by an English soldier in WWI for no other reason than that the chap didn't feel like killing yet another person that day. The US government has a literal gigantic dossier of classified operations hidden from the public, no brainer. What's shocking are things they've actually declassified. Among these documents is the detailing of one of the largest human experiments in history when the US dropped a bacteria infused fog on the city of San Francisco to test how well germ based biological warfare could prove by masking it with natural fog, which occurred back in the 1950s. It was widely successful. A specific case is that of Edward Nevin, who died from serratium arsicens, a bacteria that makes bread turn red. It had spread to his heart from a UT and killed him. In 1977, the government released a thoroughly detailed report of the testament of Nevin's grandson. Nevin's grandson tried to sue the government for wrongful death, but the court held that the government was immune to a lawsuit for negligence and that they were justified in conducting tests without subjects' knowledge. According to the Wall Street Journal, the army stated that infections must have occurred inside the hospital and the US attorney argued that they had to conduct tests in a populated area to see how a biological agent would affect that area. Imagine what they are hiding. Where can you find these declassified documents? Circumcision was popularized in America by John Harvey Kellogg, inventor of cornflakes, as a way to stop masturbation. He also advocated pouring carbolic acid on the clitoris. Cornflakes themselves were invented to reduce the temptation of masturbation. Also sex was invented to reduce the temptation of masturbation. In 2008 as a result of the financial crisis, only one American banker went to jail. I seem to recall that after the bailout, Obama asked bank execs not to award themselves bonuses for a time, as it was public money they'd received. They gave themselves bonuses anyway. That's what happens when you make it a request instead of a condition of accepting the bailout. There is a cemetery in a town in Norway, I might be wrong on the country, that hasn't been used since the 20s and cannot be used because the bodies never fully decomposed and still hold the black plague. Everything I've ever learned about opioid epidemic. Also every episode of the dollop podcast. Did you know someone tried to farm hippos to the southern US? No sleep till hippo. No sleep till hippo. Thank you. I was waiting for someone to say this. 
The ability to tell time, circadian rhythm, is an evolutionary reappearance. Cells that learn to replicate at night and rest during the day ultimately survived. I'm bastardizing it, but I find that amazing. The reason why Paraguay celebrates Kids Day on a different date than Brazil, Uruguay, Chile, and Argentina is because during the Triple Alliance War the coalition formed by Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay, at the Battle of Acostanu, more than 3,000 poorly armed Paraguayan militias, composed mainly by children, aged 9 to 15 were wiped out by 20,000 Brazilian veteran soldiers. The Allied troops met the rear guard of the Paraguayan forces at Acostanu on August 16. The battle started at 0800. Acostanu, which means Acosta's field, Acosta being a popular last name, is a vast plain of roughly 12 km to 4.6 square miles, ideal for the Brazilian cavalry. The initial charge was led by the Allied 1st Corps infantry, supported by artillery. As the Paraguans retreated across the Yagari River, the 4th. Cavalry Brigade made a right flanking movement. Meanwhile, the Second Corps reached the Paraguan rear, which left them no means to retreat. Children were said to cling to the legs of Brazilian soldiers amidst the raging battle, pleading for mercy, only to be decapitated without hesitation. Once all flanks collapsed, the wounded children tried to flee the battlefield alongside their relatives. Yet the Brazilian commander ordered his cavalry to cut the retreat and set the battlefield ablaze, including the field hospital. Large numbers of children died because of these actions. That's why they celebrated on a different date to commemorate this massacre. That's the saddest thing I ever heard about this war. Or better, massacre. Let's hope Latin America never sees a military dictatorship again. France has killed 22 African presidents. Ah yes, colonization and how country France colonized, aren't truly free to this day. Time to teach you that the currency of those country, CFA, is printed by France. But, I don't really know about other countries since I'm French, so, people from England, Spain, Portugal ECT could you tell me if the country you colonized aren't truly independent to this day? The white-throated rail is a flightless bird that went extinct due to rising sea levels on their native islands 100,000 years ago. After some time, another rail species re-inhabited the island, and in 20,000 years basically transformed themselves into the new white-throated rail as they lost the ability to fly as well. The birds went extinct, other birds came by and evolved the exact same way, basically becoming a previously extinct species. Convergent evolution. To fill in it you end up looking or functioning the same as the one who filled it before. They will eventually evolve into a crab, the perfect form is a crab. Ancient Egypt imposed the death sentence to those caught killing a cat. Cats served important roles in society to the point of worship. Being given their holy status, harming them was considered blasphemy, which was punishable by death. In effect, the ancient Egyptians had one of the earliest animal welfare laws. Hokaiman was an OS intelligence asset during the Japanese occupation of Indochina. He was almost executed by nationalist Chinese in 1943 for promoting Leninist teachings in southern China, until Washington threatened to withdraw American support for Chiang's Kai-shek. You made the man what he was, and gave him the resources, to throw off the Japanese, French and Americans. Wait until you find out a military guy sent to check out Indochina recommended we back Ho, and not the French. Trees were around for a very long time before there were organisms that could decompose them. Imagine hundreds of feet of dead tree fall. A related interesting fact, grasses are angiosperms, which only arose about 115 million years ago, and grasses themselves only popped up 55 million years ago. Nowadays we think of grass as ubiquitous, if there's a patch of empty earth, grass will be on it in a few days. But for the grand majority of Earth's history, and throughout the entirety of the dinosaur's existence, grasslands weren't a thing. If it couldn't grow a tree, fern, lichen, etc on it, there just weren't any plants there. That's why we don't have dinosaur equivalents to the grass isle. Herbivores of today like horses, antelope, etc. Being a graceful runner that could speed across open plains had no point because plains, meadows, prairie, grassland didn't exist. You chomped on bushes or you didn't exist. 
Tuskegee clinical trial, one of the largest driving factors behind distrust in the government and clinical trials. It's very evident today in the USA. The Cambodian genocide killed of a third of Cambodia. It's crazy how, so few people know about it. The hunting industry in Africa is also responsible for a large chunk of the conservation of both endangered and non-endangered species. For businesses to stay open, they need game. Only way they can have game is by ensuring the species in their grounds breed properly. In accordance with federal laws, they also must ensure that endangered species remain under shade and are also bred for the sake of their business staying open. This, of course, only applies to the authorized hunting businesses. Poachers will do whatever they want. Ancient Mayans used to cut their genitalia for bloodletting to get rainfall. Men would cut their genitalia and put pieces of bark in between them to make sure they bleed for maximum effect. The Mayans were really metal. That killing people was basically a normal way to solve problems for thousands of years. Only in modern times have people slightly toned down their upper crap ways. What's really crazy is the people today who want to go back to that, convinced they'll survive and not become one of the stats. If you condense the Earth's history down to a year's worth of time, with its formation starting 0 hundred hours January 1st, and the present being the moment we go from New Year's Eve to New Year's, life arrived sometime around February. Photosynthetic life showed up sometime in late March, mammals evolved on the 13th of December. Homo sapiens arrived 11.36 pm on December 31st. The industrial revolution started 2 seconds ago, and within the last 0.2 seconds of the year, the biodiversity on Earth has been reduced by roughly 68%, mainly driven by human dominance over ecosystems. If you lined up this history of Earth on a 12-hour clock, modern humans making an impact on the planet would be about one-tenth of a second ago. Manhattan Project when the atomic bomb was being developed, it was suspected that the bomb could ignite the atmosphere. Even after Beth theoretically proved that this could not happen, there were faint doubts. They accepted the risk. Biographies of many of the bomb's developers reveal nobody seriously thought it would happen. Genghis Khan killed something like 10% of the world's population. There is a kind of small spiny fish that lives in the Amazon which will swim up your urethra if you pee in the river with your peen hole below the water line. They swim upstream. The founding fathers of the USA didn't know dinosaurs existed. Up until the early 1980s doctors did not think newborn babies could feel pain. They didn't use anesthetic only used muscle relaxers on newborns. Kind of, they didn't give them an aesthetic for two reasons. 1. They thought the baby wouldn't remember the trauma, so it wasn't a big deal which leads to number. 2. Giving a newborn an aesthetic is very tricky to have them wake back up. Might as well do something that's a lot safer for the total survival and have them not form memories of that trauma instead of having a sleeping newborn that may never wake up due to the anesthetics. The fact that people would be flayed slash skinned alive, have the skin ripped off, and would die due to hypothermia as a result of not having skin, to keep warm this was used as a torture method in the middle ages. The Dutch once ate their prime minister. Vikings used to throw their enemies babies in the air, and tried to catch them with their sword, in the end it would look like a kebab of babies. Kebabies? This isn't super disturbing, but vibrators were originally invented to cure hysteria in especially after giving birth. Basically women got depressed because they were stuck at home with 5 plus children in likely loveless marriages. So a doctor created vibrators as a treatment, and they rose in popularity from more and more women claiming to feel hysteria coming on when really they just wanted to experience a decent orgasm. The fact that when English, Spanish, and French settlers came to the New World, there was only the chicken pox spread from the Europeans to the natives, and there was no America pox spread back to the Europeans. CGP Grey made a great video on this, and that's what really sunk into my mind, how defenseless the natives really were, how horrifyingly lucky the Europeans were with every single card in their hand advancing them over the natives, and just how horrible the genocide was. 
I've read time ago that this was due to the fact that Europeans were used to having farm animals like pigs, cows goats etc which in itself would have to make them die out to some disease and eventually become immune to it and also living with. Farming animals tended to be unhygienic back in the days so the ones who survived were able to make antibodies to many diseases. Meanwhile, the natives weren't as focused on animal farming and relied more on hunting. So when the invaders came their immune system was too fragile to deal with whatever crap Europeans carried. I could be the wrong though I don't remember where I've read it, and I'm too lazy to research. There are more people in slavery today than at any other time in history. Captain Planet had no true military rank. There were cousin species of hominids in parallel with homo sapiens for long periods of time, and we probably wiped them out. Our entire species is probably guilty of multiple completed genocides. Most of Europe has significant amounts of Neanderthal DNA. We didn't outgun them, we outfricked them. That historically religion has been the root of most of the evil in this world. No matter how you slice it man manipulates their written word to further their agenda. The first ever depiction of Buddha's human form in a statue was by the Indo Greeks, which were also the last remaining free Hellenic kingdom after the collapse of Alexander's empire. Although statues of Buddha which are so ubiquitous with the common image of Buddhism can be traced back to the Hellenic statue making tradition. Also, an almost bigger trip, Greco Buddhist monks under the Kushan Empire were also the first people to translate the Buddhist texts into Chinese, 